Bartell out here in Tahoe today. Hope to see you on the back row. The You've heard of the term hell on earth? Attractions, natural wonders, Northern California's back roads has them all. John Bartell here. Hey, over the next half hour, we're gonna count down some of my favorite road trip destinations. We may even stop at a few pit stops on the way. Let's get right to it. First stop, we're gonna head up to the North Coast to Del Norte County where the trees are big enough to drive through. This is one toll road you'll actually enjoy paying for, but don't expect to get into the express lane. When, when there's only one tree with one hole that one car can pass at one time and you're closed in the winter time. Judy Del Ponte is the toll taker at the Tour Through Tree, located in the rainforest of Del Norte County, California. They've been in my husband's family since 1895. They were Swiss immigrants. The tree's been here for hundreds of years, but the hole was cut in 1976 by Judy's late husband, Harold Del Ponte. Lightning struck it when it was young. It knocked the top of the tree out, spit it open. Harold's nephew, an engineer and a logger, used a seven foot long chainsaw to bore a nine and a half foot tall tunnel through the redwood. And Judy's been taking tolls ever since. The tour through tree is just off Highway 101, and after your picture, head over to the Trees of Mystery and say hello to Paul Bunyan. Just a half hour north of the Klamath tour through tree is a working lighthouse with an amazing view. Next stop, Crescent City and the Battery Point Lighthouse. <laughs> Not the northernmost lighthouse in California, nor is it the oldest, but this lighthouse, this picturesque Cape Cod style lighthouse, is the temporary home to a lucky lady. Dreams do come true. <laughs> <laughs> Just outside the breakers in Crescent City is Del Norte County's Battery Point Lighthouse, a volunteer-based, fully functional maritime navigational beacon. Well, no, I wasn't roped into it. I, I found out that we could volunteer for it. They rotate on a monthly basis, and who wouldn't want to do this? Katie Harrison is the acting volunteer lighthouse keeper, which requires her to live, sleep, eat, and act as the tour guide to the public. All the kids say, this is the best part of the tour. Obviously, the big perks to this job is the view from the top of the lighthouse. It is a 750 watt halogen light bulb that can be seen 14 miles out to sea. Fun fact, each lighthouse has its own distinct light flashing pattern. And this one here is 26 and a half seconds off and three and a half seconds on. Since its construction, Battery Point has experienced two giant waves one that destroyed a wooden kitchen in 1879, then a tsunami in 1964 that demolished 29 blocks in Crescent City. Big or small, the water here is a constant concern for tourists. It's twice a day the tide comes in and we become an island. The lighthouse is open to the public, but the only way to access it is to walk over during low tide. All right, I think I made it. Wild horses and alkaline lakes, that's what you'll find in the northeastern part of the state. Modoc County is home to the little town of Cedarville, a historic pioneer town. Located in the northeasternmost part of California, Cedarville is in the center of Surprise Valley, and it's at the fork of the Applegate Pioneer Trail. And this is called Surprise Valley because it's green and has lots of water. Historian and journalist Jean Billadou says Cedarville was a stopping point for early pioneers heading to Oregon or California. But it was a trading post early on. The old trading post is still standing today, and so are a number of older buildings at the made-up town of Louisville. Where we're preserving the older buildings that were pre-brick buildings. Even the brick buildings are old in Cedarville. Step into the Kressler Bonner building, and you'll see the county's oldest hand crank elevator. 
It was put in here, I believe, when the building was built in 1884. It still works. Hungry? Walk across the street to the country hearth and get one of Janet's old-fashioned cinnamon buns. And hey, a trip to the Surprise Valley wouldn't be complete without visiting one of the many hot springs. And make sure that you take in the view at the Alkaline Lake. It's just outside of town. Cedarville is rich with relics from the past and has a lot of wilderness to appreciate. A long but well worth it road trip. This next stop is my favorite national park. It's also an active volcano. Watch out for those boiling acid pits. Next stop. Lassen Volcanic National Park to a little place called Bumpus Hell. Few places in California are as volcanically active as Lassen National Park. Lassen Peak erupted between 1914 and 1917. Big, big eruption, sending ash and smoke 30,000 feet into the air. It was in part because of these images that President Roosevelt designated Mount Lassen as a national park. And curious adventurers traveled great distances to see this. It's known as Bumpus Hell. So if folks wanted to jump in here, um, not only would you get burned by the heat, but you'd get burned by the chemicals that are here. The pH can be around three or four, um, which is just a little higher than battery acid. You've heard of the term hell on earth? This is it. Bumpus Hell got its name decades before Mount Lassen's eruption. The acid waters here were made popular by an unfortunate tour guide. Kendall Van Hook Bumpus was leading folks out here and ended up punching through one of the hydrothermal soils and burned his leg up pretty bad. Ever since then, it's been known as Bumpus Hell. You don't have to worry about stepping into a boiling acid pit these days. A newly constructed walking trail and boardwalk allows visitors to get within safe distance of Bumpus Hell. The uh, nice thing about this hike, you don't have to wear deodorant. Everything smells here. What's green, red, and has a giant toothpick in it? A colossal olive, of course. We're checking out the town of Corning. You'll find the little town of Corning right off I-5, about 20 miles south of Red Bluff in Tehama County. Corning is the self-proclaimed olive city, and for good reason. A lot of olives are grown here. Harvest usually takes place in October and September, but you can taste the fruit all year long for free at the Olive Pit Tasting Room. So anybody that comes in the store is welcome to try any of these olives here. You just get to help yourself to those. Jalapeno, blue cheese, garlic, you name it, the Olive Pit probably stuffed it inside one of the local hand-picked olives. It is kind of limitless. It's true, the town of Corning loves their olives, but have you ever had an olive milkshake? So that's olive oil, and then we also have balsamic vinegar, which yeah. is sweet. That's really surprising, yeah. All right, I may be biased because of the name, but a stop in Corning wouldn't be complete without visiting Bartel's Burgers. Yes, you can get olives on that, and no, I have no relation to the owners. Oh yeah, and on your way out of town, be sure and take a selfie at the world's largest olive. It was once described as a portal to hell. Today, it's an eco-friendly power plant. Let's head over to the corner of Sonoma County to tour the Calpine Geyser Geothermal Site. This is the Geyser's Calpine Power Plant, better known as just the Geysers. It's California's largest geothermal electric generation site. How much electricity are you guys usually making? We're making about 700 megawatts of power, and uh, that's enough for the a city the size of San Francisco. The Geysers Calpine Power Plant produces around 21% of California's green energy. And every month, the company gives free tours. Tour guide John Ferrison says that the Geysers were discovered by grizzly bear hunters in 1847. It was believed that the hot waters had healing powers, and it brought in hordes of tourists, and eventually led to the construction of a grand hotel and resort. Around the 1920s, it was discovered that steam could be turned into electricity. They even used it to power the old Geyser Hotel. These days, a lot of the steam comes from treated wastewater from nearby cities that have nowhere to put it. Calpine pumps that clean, treated water underground, and when it hits the hot rocks, it turns into more steam. The carbon footprint for this power plant is very small. The Geysers once attracted vacationing tourists. Today, 
Tourists come to see how the geysers are creating green renewable power for California. If you want that perfect Instagram picture, you're going to like this next story. We're heading over to Point Reyes for a shipwreck. Located in the little town of Inverness in Marin County is the SS Point Reyes shipwreck. It was once the victim of treacherous waters of Tamales Bay. Now the SS Point Reyes is a photographer's dream. This day is absolutely gorgeous. We've got just a few puffy clouds. Going to do some long exposures after a while and get the clouds drifting by. After this fishing boat ran aground, it was dragged to its current location where it was supposed to be repaired. Instead, the land that the ship sits on was purchased and turned into a wetland reserve. Just the name, Point Reyes. Sir Francis Drake, uh, a lot of history in this area. The SS Point Reyes was supposed to be removed, but local photographers fought to keep it the tourist attraction that it is today. Usually morning light and evening light is better. During the middle of the day, you get this beautiful haze. The ship is accessible during low tide, but be careful. The wood is rotting, and the stern of the ship was set on fire by vandals back in 2017. You may find some good fortune at this next location. In the heart of San Francisco's Chinatown is the Golden Gate Fortune Cookie Factory. It's mid-morning in San Francisco's Chinatown, and there's a line forming down Ross Alley. The batter's been mixed, and the stove is piping hot. This is the Golden Gate Fortune Cookie Factory, one of the few family-owned cookie companies that create custom handmade fortunes. Since 1962, the Fortune Cookie Factory has opened their doors to tourists, and the main attraction is Kevin's 69-year-old mother, Nancy Chan. $16 a day, if she not wears, she's gonna do 10,000. 10,000. Easy. An immigrant from China, Nancy started the company with her late brother. Kevin's now in charge of the marketing, and together the family literally built the business by hand. My philosophy as, 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 a, as a cookie man, okay, is to make people happy. And it's pretty clear that people are happy when they get good fortune. The hustle and bustle of a big city got you down? You're looking for a slower pace of life? How about trying the smallest city in California? This is Amador City. How small is the smallest city in California? 0.3 square miles small. The California State Fairgrounds is bigger than Amador City. And basically, yeah, we can watch it, walk this thing in two minutes. History and art collide in Amador City. Gold brought people to this town, but art and tourism kept them here. A fine example is the yard art at Bellflower Garden Gallery. They have people from all over the place that come to buy these things. If you like baked goods, Andres makes a wicked handmade scone. It is like the tartine of the gold country. Get that scone to go and then get a drink or make dinner reservations at the Imperial Hotel. They have a scary good menu. It's haunted. It's definitely a time travel piece. If ghosts aren't your thing, maybe you'll enjoy the antique shopping down at Pig Turd Alley. <laughs> Wait, what? They would store the pigs under the building to keep them cool, and so the gold miners named it Big Turd Alley. Just in case you're wondering, it doesn't smell here on Pig Turd Alley. Next stop, North Bloomfield, where giant water cannons blew away an entire mountainside over at Malakoff Diggins State Park. This is Malakoff Diggins State Park. It's located in Nevada County's remote town of Bloomsfield, and it's the site of one of the most destructive mining operations in California history. And what you have here is an area that was carved out by hydraulic mining through the use of large monitors, which are basically these huge water cannons. Miners use those water cannons to extract gold from the mountains. You just fire this thing off, and at 16,000 gallons a minute, it's, it's taking that hillside out completely and in no time flat. Not long after hydraulic mining was banned, the town of Bloomsfield went bust and Malakoff Diggins Mine was abandoned. More than 130 years later, the rusty metal pipes still litter the 3,200-acre state park. They act as a reminder of how destructive gold fever can be. It's strange, it's odd, it's weird. We are checking out the mystery spot in Santa Cruz. 
Just five miles from the Santa Cruz Wharf and world-class surfing is one of California's most famous unexplained phenomenons. Small warning. You may feel dizziness, nausea, and random fits of laughter. Do not worry, these effects will only last about two to three weeks. The mystery spot was discovered by George Prather after his cabin slid down a hill in the 1940s. Soon after, he started noticing strange things like round objects rolling uphill. Correct, I'm gonna give it a little push. Whoa, that's kind of freaky. Not impressed? How about you step inside the cabin and stand awkwardly close to Daniel? Oh, okay. What angle am I standing right now? About 17. 17 degrees. Mm -hmm. George Prather couldn't live in the cabin, so he turned it into a mysterious tourist attraction, and it caught the attention of a Life magazine photographer who took this famous picture. My favorite part of the picture is the woman, because her name was... Eileen. <laughs> Cuteness warning! This next story is loaded with video of playful otters. Next stop, Monterey County, Elkhorn Slough. It's a protected research area near Moss Landing in Monterey County. And these are southern sea otters. And in a good way, the Elkhorn Slough is sort of infested with them. Up to about 140 is the population for the Elkhorn Slough. Now, 140 sea otters may not seem like a lot, but it actually is. And that's the highest concentration of southern sea otters in the world. You see, the southern sea otter has had a pretty rough life, and it's all because of hunters back in the 17 and 1800s. It was a very profitable thing for fur traders to get hold of. Thanks to rehabilitation efforts, visitors have ample opportunity to see and observe the otters. What this otter is doing right now is grooming. More than 700 animal species call Elkhorn Slough home. It's a special place, a testament to conservation efforts and a safe haven for all animals. This is Bodie State Park, a naturally preserved ghost town, and it's the coldest place in California. Uh, the coldest I've seen is negative 29 degrees Fahrenheit. Bodie is a National Weather Service monitoring site, and one of Joseph's jobs is to manually record the weather. This is, a, not, this is not the, the, the most sophisticated process here. No, it's not, but it's tried and true, so they've been doing this for a very long time. From 1887 to 1882, Bodie was in its prime as a bustling gold town. It's estimated that eight to 10,000 people lived in Bodie. That is, until two devastating fires hit the town. Yeah, so the 1892 one wiped out all the brothels, all the saloons, all the really cool stuff you probably want to see. These days, the park rangers work to educate people on the archeological importance of the artifacts in Bodie. This town is a piece of California history, and the main reason it's so well preserved here is because it's frozen in time in the middle of nowhere. Big trees and crystal caves. That's just a few of the natural wonders you'll find at Sequoia National Park in Tulare County. This is the giant forest, home to five of the world's largest trees. To give you guys a little perspective, these tree trunks get up to about 40 feet wide and the tree gets about 300 feet tall. That's big, if you can't tell. This is Sequoia and Kings Canyon National Park. It's so big and so rugged that you can't even drive most of it. 95% of the park is designated wilderness, and giant trees dominate the landscape. We're looking at thousands of years old when we look at these trees right here. Rebecca Jones is a naturalist with Sequoia Parks Conservancy. It's her job to point out the small and hidden wonders in this giant park. So there's a sequoia seed. Whoa, that's it. That's going to... Look at what you can grow up in. You can be this. When you get older, you can, you can be this. Everything in Sequoia National Park is big. And as long as humans continue to make small impacts, this place will only get bigger. Strange rocks and stunning landscapes. Our next and final roadside destination takes us to the Eastern Sierra, just outside the little town of Lone Pine. 
Located in Inyo County, just off Highway 395 in Lone Pine, California, is the Mobius Arch. And it's one of many rock arches in the Alabama hills. But what makes this rock unique is the size and location. The arch almost perfectly frames up with Mount Whitney, the tallest mountain in California. The Alabama hills is managed by the Bureau of Land Management and open year round to the public. The landscape was shaped by geological uplifting and 100 million years of wind and water erosion. This place is a hiker's dream and one of Hollywood's favorite places to film westerns. The rounded rocks, stark skies, and jagged peaks of the Sierra Nevada have been attracting filmmakers since the early 1900s. Oh, and hey, if you want an odd, memorable picture, stop by the Nightmare Rock. It's just off Whitney Portal Road. Well, if you like those road trip destinations, you'll find directions and more in-depth stories at the Backroads website. Just log on to abc10.com. And while you're over there, check out the interactive map. It allows you to make a road trip of your own. And hey, if you got a road trip idea for me, I'm on Facebook and Instagram. So just send me a message. I'm John Bartell. Hope to see you on the Backroads.